Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Josh and today we're going to be talking about how the Panasonic S5 has made me a better videographer. Before I got the Panasonic S5, I was using the Sony APS-C lineup of mirrorless cameras and for the work I was doing at the time, they were absolutely fine. However, in using those cameras, I became quite lazy. I wasn't really paying too much attention to composition and framing and since the AF was so good, I already switched to manual focus, which meant that I was just leaving it up to the camera to decide what I wanted it to focus on at each given moment. So of course, for me, I wasn't really doing much work at all. I found that with this mental Mentality, I wasn't actually getting better at the things I was making and looking back on the projects that I made with those cameras I wasn't actually happy with the results that I was getting in this video We'll be talking about how the Panasonic S5 has made me a better videographer as opposed to limiting me like some people might think that it would have done So first and foremost not relying on autofocus. It's no secret that anyone that uses a Sony camera is heavily reliant on the autofocus from their camera because it's so good. And while that can be seen as a positive attribute, I can actually see it as a negative hindrance to that end user and how capable they are at using their equipment. When you're cushioned this much by a single feature inside your camera, you actually become quite reliant on it. And what that means is that if you're handed a different camera to use for the shoot or you hire something else or you have to use something that's not in your comfort zone, then you're actually gonna be a lot worse with it than you would be uh, because of that one feature that you're so reliant on. You limit yourself to being only as good as a camera's AF performance, and that is extremely limiting when you think about the grand scheme of things. For me as a videographer, I would like to get to the stage where I can pick up any camera from any brand and get the exact same results, regardless of the AF or the specs that that camera has. Don't get me wrong, right now I'm not talking about the storyboarding, the framing, the narrative, the composition, all that sort of stuff, you know, the actual things that make you a really good videographer. I'm talking more so about how you use your equipment and how that's actually impacting the work that you're doing. Are you someone that uses your equipment in a way that limits you or are you going to take its features and use that as a positive but also develop your own skills as well. Ever since I've had the S5, every single commission project I've done with it, I've done completely a manual focus without autofocus at all. In the cinema line of cameras, there's no AF at all and if there is, it's like AF-S which is pretty much single point AF and it's not really useful for video at all and if it doesn't have that then it literally doesn't have an AF system built into the camera whatsoever. Um, and every single film you've seen, you know, ever since you're born has been shot without autofocus. Yeah, we're all sitting there watching videos that say, oh, how to make your gimbal moves more cinematic and how to color your footage in a more cinematic way. So of course, we're all trying to get a cinematic look. So why are we using autofocus if that's not how cinema cameras are used. And when you manual focus, you have complete control over what you emphasize at any given time in your scene. Therefore, if you have a subject that's moving further away from the camera and you want them to be in focus, and of course you can rack that focus quite easily. Um, if you're moving past and there's like subjects or obstacles in the way of you and your subject, then without the AF on, you're then making sure that the camera's gonna stay nice and focused on your subject as opposed to jumping to whatever's closest to it. Um, so it's like little things like that which really like allow you to be more free when you're actually feeling Filming, and that's what I really love and like I mean I guess it's only about maybe a week to a week and a half of manual focusing to really sort of start to nail it I know there's people that have been doing it for years that probably are a lot more precise with their manual focus pulling than I am but for me I can get usable footage after about a week of practicing manual focus so it's really not that hard and I think the skill itself will actually set you up long term in the future to be able to use any piece of equipment that you want to and let's be honest if you're a videographer chances are you are looking to aspire to get a cinema camera at some point down the line in your life so therefore why not be practicing for that sort of move up now instead of relying on what your camera can do. I'm actually having so much more fun now shooting my commission projects because I feel like it's actually me that's making the images come to life and not the camera itself. Of course, before you start getting all angry in the comment section, there are definitely exceptions to this rule. Like if you're someone that's into self-filming, vlogging, or you do these sort of YouTube videos, then of course I can understand why a decent air performance in a camera will matter a lot to you because it's a lot easier just to set up your camera and make sure that it's locked onto you when you are moving around in the scene. But I'm not really talking about those who self-film in this instance. I'm talking more so about those videographers that are actually behind the camera and they're the ones using it, um, not for when your camera's locked upon a tripod like it is now in front of me. It's no secret that a full frame sensor will give you a greater sense of depth in your image. And to start off with, that actually threw me off quite a bit because I was finding that I was having to stop down quite a bit more to get everything that I wanted in focus with my full frame camera when comparing it to my crop sensor cameras. Why am I telling you this? Well, sometimes it takes a change in your equipment to actually start paying more attention to what it is you're actually doing. With my old setup, I was just on autopilot because I was just so used to what I was doing, so I wasn't really paying 
paying too much attention to the actual settings I was using. And now with this equipment change and using the full frame sensor, I feel like I'm actually paying a lot more attention to what I want to capture and how I want to capture it, i.e. how much depth I want in my shot and how that's actually affecting the overall uh, video that I'm making. In my opinion, if a camera makes you more aware of the settings you're using while you're shooting, then it's actually making you a better videographer because you're more in tune with what you're actually doing and therefore you're actually learning more about how each setting is actually affecting your image. And of course, I know the exposure triangle is a very simple thing for most people, like I, I, I'm not like the back of my hand, but changing from a different format of sensor will slightly alter how you use those settings in your images and it will ultimately yield a different look. Therefore, I think it's really, really good and actually makes you a better videographer overall when you do have that change because it means that you're actually paying more attention. Becoming more creative with handheld shooting. I've spoken about this topic a few times now on my channel and while it may not be a huge deal to some, it's actually a massive deal to me. Historically speaking, I would never shoot handheld before I got the S5. The form factor of my old crop sensor cameras coupled with the fact that it had no in-body image stabilization meant that all the footage I took handheld always came out looking shaky and awful. Therefore, I always steered away from it like the plague. However, since the S5 has a fantastic IBIS system inside the body and it's also really easy to rig up this camera and make it a little bit heavier, I'm finding now that I'm shooting handheld more than ever and will probably get at least one to two shots on every single shoot handheld. Shooting handheld allows me to get a lot more creative what I'm shooting. Oh, that sounded a bit Australian, what I'm shooting, because it means that I'm able to get the shots that might be a bit too cumbersome to get on the gimbal, i.e. when you're in a sort of tight space or you're in a tight environment, or you want to get shots where you're shooting up at a subject or down at a subject, and I find that shooting handheld actually gives you a lot more freedom and flexibility to do that. This in itself has actually made me a more versatile videographer because I'm actually able to look at the scenes that I'm shooting and figure out different ways to capture it that aren't just really smooth gimbal shots or shots that are locked upon a tripod. Handheld footage can also give a really dramatic effect in the video that you're making. Um, a little bit of handheld shake can actually give a little bit more tension and drama to your shots, but the difference between cinematic handheld footage and really, really distracting handheld footage is the fact that you can get micro jitters, and that's why on these smaller cameras, handheld footage doesn't look as good as it does on the big cinema rigs. And that's basically just down to weight. So what you can do is you can actually just rig up your uh, little mirrors camera and make it heavier, and then what that would do is actually alleviate those micro jitters that you see that actually makes your footage ugly. And then in doing that, you'll get a sort of like nice handheld sort of look where it's sort of moving slightly, but it's not too distracting. And you're still getting that drama in your shot without deterring from the storyline too much. You're only ever as malleable or creative as you allow yourself to be. If you rely on your cameras to do all of your heavy lifting on your work, then realistically, you're not gonna be the one that sees the gains. The S5 is a more than competent camera for video production when you approach it with everything that I've discussed in this video in mind. It will seriously level up your skills as a videographer, and it will essentially train you to be a lot more competent with any camera that you pick up. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it somewhat entertaining or useful, and if you did, then please consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot, and hopefully, I shall see you in the next one. Thank you.